to a lot of young people, to a lot of people not exposed to it, that uh, classical music is beyond the realm and it is not something for the masses, it's not popular. Is that really been the thing that has guided you, that you, in terms of a principle, what you've tried to do with music? Uh, I wouldn't say that that's, that's, the, uh, that's the objective, because in classical music, um, when we perform very well, the public and sometimes the musicians, we go through what can only be called an, an existential experience. We are transported out of this daily crude life that we live in. And uh, if we play well, we, we go to some other dimension. Who knows where that is? And we've all experienced it before. Um, so it's, it's not I'm talking eerie concepts. And then at a certain point, um, you come back into the concert hall, you realize that you're holding a program in your hands and that um, 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 you've been in a traffic jam before the concert hall or you had a problem parking your car. I mean, the sort of banality of everyday life, you, you come back, where have you been for those 10 minutes, those 15 minutes? And that's, that is a mystery. So a, p a large part of classical music is mystery, but it's not all. A large part of classical music should be entertaining, should have fun, but it, has, it should be more. Uh, a lot of, large part of classical music demands an enormous amount of, uh, of focus and, um, and prof uh, profundity, but that's not all. It has to be more. Well, I like that part, I didn't like this part, or gee, you know, that was a beautiful phrase, or I never heard this piece before. It is through di that kind of dialogue a kind of a confirmation of things that we believe in. We believe in beauty, uh, we believe in proportion, we believe in refinement, we believe in emotion, drama. Um, and through that sharing, uh, we do confer confirm certain um, shared values that we have.